Yo, 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 what's up all you burners, stoners, and potheads out there? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? Great. Sounds awesome. I'm doing great too. (laughs) So, hey everybody out there, it is Pride Month, and uh, we're going to talk about... uh, Another company like we did last episode, and this is a uh, company called Stone Road. But before we talk about them, we are going to smoke. Mrs. Weed Man, light yeah. that bowl up because you need it. What am I smoking? Uh, this is I'm going to call this my official attitude adjustment. <laughs> I, need, I need an attitude adjustment. <laughs> we are smoking the Acai Berry Gelato strain that we bought from that uh, uh, couple at the uh, high tea event we went to. Okay, I have to say I can't even light the lighter because I was pulling weeds (laughs) yesterday after work. (laughs) And my forearms, my muscles are shot. I'm going to try. So this I see very gelato is a sativa dominant hybrid. Range is about 19%. It's a 70% sativa, 30% indica. Acai Berry Gelato, also known as Acai Berry Gelato, is a sativa dominant hybrid strain created through crossing the delicious pink panties (laughs) and sunset sherbet strains. With parents like these, you know that you're definitely in for a treat when it comes to flavor and effects with acai berry gelato. This bud packs a super sweet and fruity, creamy berry flavor and a lightly sour tropical exhale. We did have two joints of that. We smoked both of those over the weekend. Very good strain. I had a little bit of, uh, of uh, flour left that I put in our bowl, our eight decades bowl. Uh, this bud packs a super sweet, fruity, creamy berry flavor with a lightly sour tropical exhale. The aroma is very similar with the earthly effect that is very mellow in nature. The acai berry gelato high is just as bright and lifting as the flavor. Packed full of motivation and focus. You'll feel an almost immediate influx of cerebral energy, sending your mental state flying high with the focus creativity and lends itself well to any task at hand. This is accompanied by a notable boost in your spirits, Mrs. Weed Man, which pushes out any negative or racing thoughts and leaves you able to focus on what you need to get done. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, it, like I said, the average THC is about 19%. Effects may, uh, I see very perfect for treating those suffering from conditions such as chronic pain, migraines, or headaches, chronic fatigue, depression, and mood swings. This bud has dense and tight olive green nugs, which I do have to admit it does, with deep purple undertones, thin orange hairs, and a coating of tiny deep amber crystal trichomes. The effects, creative euphoria, happy motivation, sociable uplifting, Relieves symptoms of chronic pain, depression, fatigue, headaches, migraines, and mood swings. Flavors. Berry, citrus, <laughs> creamy, fruity, sweet, and tropical. And the aromas are citrus, earthy, fruity, sour, and tropical. What do you think, Mrs. Weed Man? Well, I just kept going back for more as you were explaining what the um, results of smoking it would be. I thought, I need more. I need more. <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> it's tasty. It definitely has that berry way about it <clears throat> sticky though it doesn't burn real easy yeah I, mean, uh, <laughs> I cut it instead of grinded it that was lazy lazy it was good mm, tastes nice yeah i chopped it with the scissors instead yeah gave it a little trim little trim me trim trim instead of grinding it up um but we smoked it over the weekend we were pretty high we smoked both joints with some peeps and we had a lot of fun oh yeah so it was good stuff it was a fantastic weekend we had a lot of fun. Got to spend some time with some friends we hadn't seen in a while. Yuki spent a lot of time with her. We got to go on some walks, and her training is going well. So awesome weekend. So much fun. So much love in the air, and so much weed to be smoked. So Mrs. Wee Man, yeah, you ready to start the show? Sure. We're going to talk about Stone Road, because it is Pride, M- Pride Month, and it is founded by CEO Lex Crow- Crowen in 2016. Stone Road is a cannabis farm that's working to make the difference through ethical growing practices an employee-owned structure, and their signature product, breathtakingly beautiful joints. Named after the Crowans first started growing cannabis, Stone Road is a company built on fair wages, diverse hiring, and people-over-profit model for cannabis you can feel good about smoking instead of just high. That is fucking awesome. That's why I'm talking about this company is because they're people-over-profit. Cannabis industry You're seeing it as we speak. Get ready. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But companies like this make me believe in the cannabis industry. The easiest way for consumers to voice their support is with their dollars. If you support companies that have like-minded values to you, those companies will succeed and those companies will grow and continue to represent you in the marketplace. That's from owner Rex Crowen 
And one of the many things that sets Stone Road apart is the widely followed gorgeous Instagram, which seeks to show cannabis consumers as they authentically are. Everyone talks about the Instagram first like, oh, it's so diverse. It's so inclusive. But that was literally just reflections of the cannabis industry. Half of our photos are just some uh, from consumers who DM us on what they want to feature on our page. The fact is that the majority of them are uh, BIPOC consumers and LGBTQ plus consumers. And those are the people who support Stone Road, says Crowen. With hand-trimmed reserve buttons, selling joints rolled in fine French paper, Stone Road products exemplify what it means to love cannabis. We're trying to raise the standards of the industry. I really feel like we're at this pivotal moment where so many people are interacting with the plant for the first time. If we can take them, feel comfortable, and like they're indulging in something beautiful and natural, that's going to be the difference between continuously fighting new restrictions against commercial cannabis activity and cannabis possession and making them say, yes, we want this industry. We want these jobs. We want this inclusivity. With distribution across California, licensed products in Oklahoma, and plans for future expansion in New York, Stone Road products give queer consumers everywhere a glimpse into a more equitable future of cannabis. And for Crowen, there's something special about the right now for queer cannabis consumers and entrepreneurs. This is a once-in-a-generation time. It's an extremely exciting time. I um, read that article, and I was thinking about what he said. This is a once-in-a-generation time, an extremely exciting time. Don't forget, these last, let's just say, be honest, as more and more states are opening up, but you know, the West Coast was way ahead of the pack from everybody. But let's just say the last 10 years. This is all a new industry to all of us. Yes, we are used to the traditional market, the way you got it from your plug. And, and you know, you had people maybe growing in their house and a buddy of yours would, or somebody would give you some nugs they were growing in their, in their backyard. Or they threw some seeds out, whatever. What I'm just telling you is this is unprecedented. We've never seen in history a whole new legal industry. In the last 5 to 10, 15, 20 years – how it's grown, where the changes are coming from, who's a part of it, who can get in, who can't get in, corporate cannabis, independent owned cannabis, all about money, all about the all about the people. There's so much going on and this is a chance for this industry to do it the right way. It's tough because the big money people see the billions of billions of beep 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 beeps in the cannabis industry. They see it. They want it. And what pisses me off more than anything is that they didn't want it for so long. They didn't want to be a part of it. They didn't like it. They thought it was, oh, look, he's smoking kind of thing. But now these guys and gals and all these major corpo dudes and dudettes want the money. And that's all they care about. And it frustrates me. Just But this gentleman here put a little like lift in my spirit by just reading what he talked about. And uh, it's pretty awesome. So I, I'm going to read more stuff about uh, LGBTQ businesses and it's Pride Month, but this brings me hope. Hmm. Beyond CBD and THC, the hottest cannabinoids and terpene, terpenes you should know about. We do talk a lot about cannabinoids on this show. We do talk mm-hmm. a lot about terpenes on this show because it is important. It's part of the flower. It's part of the medicine you're taking. It's part of it's going to help you with your ailments, with what you need it for. So cannabis product manufacturers have been zoning in on these cannabinoids and terpenes that offer subtly a powerful healing properties that you may be interested in exploring. We talk about CBD and THC all the time, but let's talk a little bit about what they're saying. Terpenes are the compound in plants not just in cannabis, that are responsible for the aroma and flavor prof- uh, profile, which we've talked about. These occur naturally in the plant, and they served as an evolutionary purpose to ward off predators or attract pollinators. Each strain of the phenotype of cannabis has its own unique ratio of terpenes as well as cannabinoids. There are some 50,000 known terpenes today, but the cannabis plant has around 250, though scientists may soon discover more. Terpenes may be derived from the plant in the essential oils form, though they can be derived from the other plant that contains the same terpenes such as lavender or pine. Where the terpenes come from will impact its consistency and its purity. Here's a rundown on some of the most popular terpenes and some of the health benefits, which we've talked about these, but as I always learn more, I have to share. So, uh, terpaline 
It is not common, nor is it abundant in cannabis, but you only need a small amount to experience its benefits. It has the hibiscus and floral aroma and is known for its relaxing and sedating effects. Give me that. Give me that. I want more of that. More of that. <laughs> B-carifeline is an anti-inflammatory terpene and has, uh, has antibacterial, antioxidant, and antimicrobial properties. Research has uncovered its potential abilities to fight against neurodegenerative disease because it protects the brain from inflammation as well. Other studies have shown it can help treat the symptoms of multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's disease. So smoke that, be careful. I like that. Myrcene is one of the most abundant terpenes in cannabis. We find that in a lot of the strains we smoke. It has an earthy, musky aroma, but cannabis consumers appreciate sedative effects. Myrcene is one of the uh, compounds responsible for the couch lock that uses experience with some cannabis strains. Love it. Love me some myrcene. Humulene. Uh, you also find that in hops. So it, uh, the, as you all know, the hops plant and the cannabis plant are related. They're cousins, long lost relatives somewhere along the line. But humulene is uh, common in cannabis as well as hops. It has a mildly spicy, musky, and earthly scent. When it comes to the medical benefits, humulene is renowned for its antibacterial properties and inflammation-fighting characteristics, though some studies show promise in its ability for shrinking tumors. I like it in beer, but beer makes you fat. So <laughs> if you drink six IPAs at 250, 300 calories a piece, if you smoke humulene and cannabis and you don't get the munchies like I do, you ain't gaining weight. So find that humulene and cannabis and help it shrink those tumors. Uh, limeline is easily recognizable because of its sweet, fresh, and citrusy scent. You can detect limeline in lemon strains of cannabis, which are associated with mood uplifting properties and mood enhancement, as well as its ability to relieve stress. It also has powerful antidepressant properties that are ideal for anyone struggling with emotional distress. Limeline is also gastroprotective and antifungal benefits. Linalu. As uh, you will find that in um, woody, spicy floral scents, you can smell it in lavender too. It's one of the oldest known natural sedatives, but aside from that, is has other important properties. Lena Lou is an anti-convulsant and anti-anxiety and anti-depressant and also muscle relaxant. Hmm. Mm. So I know I've talked about those terpenes before, but this was a newer article with some new information, so I figured I'd talk about it. Cannabinoids are unique naturally occurring compounds that the cannabis plant. Uh, while the scientists currently known, uh, know of 500 different cannabinoids, we have only identified around 70 of them. The most famous we know of is THC and CBD. All cannabinoids work with interacting with the cannabinoid receptors found outside of the cells of the human found outside of the cells in the human body, most of which are concentrated in the central nervous system. The cannabinoid receptors are known as the CB1 and CB2 receptor. Just like terpenes, there are specific ca- cannabinoid products that are now available on the market. Each of them have their own cannabinoid profile, which has various benefits for the human mind and body. Here are some other popular cannabinoids, and some we've talked to, but some new information. CBG. We just talked about CBG, didn't we, Mrs. Weedman? We did. Is the grandfather of THC and CBD because, chemically speaking, it serves as the foundation and building block that the cannabis plant uses to produce these other compounds. However, on its own, research shows that it has numerous benefits, especially for anxiety, treating IBS, tumors, and bacterial conditions. THCV, which is kind of the hot new cannabinoid coming out now, I used to say CBN was. THCV and CBG are the two newer. You're seeing it in products calling the trifecta. We have THC, CBD, CBG. Now you're seeing the trif- the the quad two now, where you're seeing them add a little THCV to it on top of the other three. So it's kind of funny that you're just getting that mixture. Remember, I said a long time ago, I want all the cannabinoids. I want them all. I want them all in in my flower. <laughs> so THCV possesses a similar molecule of makeup with THC, though it has less carbon atoms. It can potentially be intoxicating through, since it's so little, it's nearly impossible to feel anything. It's widely used as an appetite suppressant. You are seeing new products come out in the market with THCV and, and promoting that to help uh, appetite suppressant. So if you're trying to lose a little weight, it would be beneficial to look for products that have THCV. Maybe that's why I don't get the munchies. Maybe the buds we smoke has a little bit in there that affects me. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Then Reese, how does that explain that I do get the munchies? I don't know. Maybe Always. There's, maybe there's <laughs> I think in. it's just a, I just decide I smoked, so I should have munchies. <laughs> I will eat munchies. <laughs> Research has shown that it's also going to be beneficial for diabetics in managing blood glucose. Uh, CBN. 
is a cannabinoid created with THC has uh, degraded because it is exposed to light or when your cannabis has aged. However, if you ingest old cannabis, the CBN content is mildly sedating. And we've talked about CBN in some other, other articles. Some people are saying that it doesn't. Some people are just saying you're just giving more THC, but it's old. I don't know. I take CBN in some products. I like it. Uh, some researchers do believe, though, that even a small amount of CBN is adequate for relaxing the body compared to the 10 milligram pill of value. That's good to know. So if you're trying to get off that shit, do the CBN. There's going to be a lot more research. Uh, I've talked to people where CBN doesn't work for them. It works for me and Mrs. Weeman, though. We mm -hmm. like it. We took the we took one the other night. It was two milligrams. We usually only take one. Two milligrams knocked me the fuck out. Yeah, you were asleep in <laughs> oh <my> ten minutes. <laughs> we smoked, and I that that edible kicked in. I took that two milligrams of CBS. Oh man, I was psh, knocked the fuck out. <laughs> uh, CBC is the second most abundant cannabinoid in most cannabis strains after THC and CBD. It was discovered in 1960, and while there is still more research needed for this cannabinoid, scientists do know that it enhances the benefits of other cannabinoids, especially CBG, CBN, THC, and CBD, through the entourage effect, which we've talked about. There's people saying that eh, that might be an entourage effect. I do believe in it. So it's from the research and stuff I've talked about. So still more work needs to be done, though. The entourage effect. It's also interesting to note that the current research says CBC is 10 times more powerful than CBD when it comes to treating stress and anxiety. Hmm. Damn. That's good stuff. So, uh, yeah. So just some more information. Just always a good reminder, too. If you if you read this before, if you heard this before, it's always a good reminder, though, for me to always reread stuff just to learn more because there's always new information coming out about these cannabinoids. So hopefully it helps everybody. Sure has helped me, especially that two milligrams of CBN helped me the other night. Knock the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> now, you got some research on some terpity terp terp terps. Yep. Yep. Following up, Mr. Weedman. Go ahead, Mrs. Weedman. Take yes. it to me. This is the surprising things research is telling us about terpenes. Researchers are looking for new and innovative ways to use terpenes found in cannabis to open new doors to functional ingredients that benefit the human mind, body, and mood. Terpenes have long been known for their role in essential oils and as the building blocks of aroma and flavor. But now, a growing body of research reveals why and how forest bathing in Japan, soaking in tubs with essential oils, or smoking a joint with a sp specific blend of terpenes can change the way a person thinks and feels. Thanks to science, we're finding out much more about terpenes' broad spectrum of effects and benefits. A recent research review at the University of Arizona concluded that terpenes may be highly effective in developing pain medications, especially because they are safer than traditional painkillers. Terpenes are low on the toxicity scale and present few side effects. According to the study's authors, the terpene biochemical diversity present in cannabis and their co-expression with phytocannabinoids is unique <clears throat> and remarkable. So unique and remarkable that they've decided to deepen their research. Pretty cool. Humans have a built-in endocannabinoid system. We talk about this often, right? The ECS. And it is one of the most important physiological systems involved in maintaining health. Cannabinoids, terpenoids, and other essential fatty acids, spices, chocolate, and herbs play an important role in stimulating and enhancing our endocannabinoid system. Years ago, scientists discovered that certain terpenes found in cam cannabis may target the THC-specific cannabinoid receptor CB1 and the inflammation-related receptor adenosine, or A2A, in the human body. For this study, researchers focused on terpenes like B-myrcene, uh, geranol, and limonene to determine their direct benefits and effects. They found that limonene, the terpene found mainly in citrus fruits and cannabis, holds strong anti-inflammatory and anti-anxiety properties, but lacked evidence as a painkiller. On the other hand, geranol, which is commonly found in many fruits, vegetables, and herbs, is associated with anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and anti-pain properties. That's dope. Yeah. They also found that cannabis terpenes can mimic the effects of cannabinoids when used by themselves, including the reduction in pain sensation. 
When researchers combined the terpenes with cannabinoids, they discovered pain relief without harmful side effects. Scientists have also sought to understand how the terpene uh, pinene and linalool affect the mind and body, and their findings were quite profound. Pinene, a clear liquid associated with the sap and aroma of pine, is one of the most highly occurring terpenes on earth and in cannabis. Several plants high in pinene have been used in various medicines to treat seizures, gastrointestinal challenges, hypertension, fungal infections, and more. Recent research shows that when inhaled and or taken orally, pinene is an anti-inflammatory, helps relieve depression, lessens the chance of seizures, and may reduce a person's chance of stroke. Likewise, the same research found that linalool, commonly found in cannabis, lavender, basil, and rose, may offer neuroprotection and help treat Alzheimer's, diabetic neuropathy, stroke, bacterial infections, and systemic inflammation. Extensive research is also being done to understand the role terpenes play in cancer treatment. The terpene myrcene, which is found in hops, bay, verbena, lemongrass, citrus, and cannabis, may help fight human cervical, breast, and colon cancers while helping to reduce DNA damage by about 50%. That's huge. Likewise, carophyllene, found in black pepper, oregano, clove, basil, rosemary, and cannabis, is showing promise in lung cancer and ovarian cancer. Also, humulene, found humulene, yep. found yeah, yeah, that's it. Found in cannabis, hops, and several herbs, may inhibit cell production and may be an effective agent in fighting colon cancer. Crazy. Finally, limonene has been shown to reduce tumor growth. One study also found it to decrease the incidence and metastasis of gastric cancers. It decreased DNA synthesis and it inhibited pulmonary adenoma formation in mice. Those mice, man. Yeah. They get all the luck, all (laughs) the good terpenes. (laughs) Thankfully, the world of science is finally starting to shift its viewpoint and acknowledge that terpenes can play a serious role in health and wellness. At Abstracts, we have invested, or they have invested, in a scientific approach to terpene research, extraction, and product formulation. Abstracts 3D analysis allows them to fully understand and complete the complete spectrum of 500 plus compounds within a plant and then use a terpene extraction process to isolate individual compounds that can be used for multiple purposes. Much more lies within a terpene than its aroma and flavor. We are all just beginning to scratch the surface of the potentially life-changing benefits. Good stuff. More to come. Yeah, you know, I mean, between both the articles with the cannabinoid and terpenes that I read and then you following up with the research that you did and I did, I mean, sums it up. So if terpenes, if the same, okay, so what was it, linalool that's also in um, lavender and verbena. Mm -hmm. So if the terpenes are also found in other plants or other what plants Plants. mostly Mm -hmm. or some things were in pepper, whatever, whatever they're found in. Herbs. Can you just consume those items to get more or is it kind of is it the same amount i guess could they extract linalool from cannabis and extract it from yes, lavender and get do. the same they already product? do now is it the same product though not no, really no not at all and there's so plant, is the there's one... companies that use plant-based terpenes to put in their stuff right and it's a totally different are there more benefits from it coming from cannabis the research that we've read I think so. There is a lot more. They're more pronounced, I mean, than it is, I think, in a lot of... Most people want cannabis-based terpenes in their product versus mm. plant-based terpenes. Right. Uh, I think you get... I think there's there's more more in those, okay. in the cannabis, in the <laughs> research that they're doing. So I want cannabis terpenes yeah. all the time, you know? Here's... I don't know if this is because of COVID or just... Maybe this has always been this way in 
I think it's maybe it's always been this way, but I guess employees are testing positive for cannabis in higher numbers than ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, of course, because it's been, it's legal now in a lot of states, <laughs> or medically legal in a lot of states too. So, employees are using cannabis at a higher rate than ever before, as workplaces are increasingly running into issues involving the inclusion of cannabis in on their job or pre-hire drug testing. According to a recent report by Quest Diagnostics, the issue is only going to get, I wouldn't say worse, but this article says worse without changes in companies' drug testing policies. Of course, we've been we've read about this so many times. The problem isn't that more employees are using cannabis on the job. It's that the THC from cannabis they use m- many days before, even weeks before, will show up in their urine. Of course, usually 30 days. Some cities like Philadelphia are dealing with this issue by banning pre-employment drug screenings for including cannabis, but people in other places continue to lose their jobs for using cannabis during the off hours, even when it's medical cannabis prescribed by a doctor. Um, Highest positive results since 2001. In a press release about the recent uh, test data, Quest Diagnosis reported the positive tests for all had reached the highest point since 2001. They also reported that the current positive rate is 30% higher than all-time low reached in 2010 uh, to 2012. Well, yes, man. Come on. It's legal. People think they want to be able to enjoy cannabis like they can enjoy a beer or a glass of wine. If they're home on a weekend and they want to smoke and they're doing it legally and following the rules of how they can do it, you shouldn't test for it at all. You don't test for alcohol. I mean, some people come in reeking. Like fucking mm-hmm. liquor from a weekend. <laughs> uh, Quest based the, re- the report on 11 million drug tests involving urine, hair, and oral fluid done in 2021. The positive results for cannabis used reached an all-time high of 3.9% in 2021, an 8.3% increase over 2020. That finding is based on more than 6 million urine tests. Ooh. Quest reported that in the past five years, positive, positive for cannabis in the U.S. workforce increased 50%. Of course, it's easy to explain. Cannabis is now legal for millions of Americans across the country. As noted by the Mayo Clinic, THC, the chemical ingredient in cannabis, can remain detectable in urine for up to three days or after just a single use. It can stay detectable for up to 30 days for those who use cannabis daily, which may, which many medicinal cannabis users do. Uh, so employees must be aware of the laws. And we've talked about some of the states and some of the laws in some people's states. But so... Uh, the Society of Human Resource Management noted that more employers are, are taking cannabis out of the typical five-panel drug test. The other four are amphetamines, cocaine, opiates, and uh, uh, penicillidine. However, they caution that employees should stay away f- of company policies, even if it's states where cannabis is legal. Oh, stay aware. Uh, state lawmakers across the country are considering bills to provide workplace protections for employees. That's awesome. It's an interesting twist. The Quest findings, the overall positive test rate for all was higher in many states where cannabis, especially recreational cannabis, is not legal. For example, the positive drug test rate for Oklahoma is 7%, Arkansas 5.8%, Louisiana 56 Alabama 52 How does that happen when you only put that thing, put those uh, things up your butt up in there? <laughs> <laughs> and Utah, 4.7%. California's 4%. New York, 4.5%. Colorado, 4.3%. And Washington, 4.3%. That's the national positive uh, test rate in 2021 was 4.6%. Hmm. Crazy. Good for you, cannabis. <laughs> we like to cook with cannabis. We do. We do. We like putting some of that butter on our vegetables. We like Baking, of course, we like. We've talked about some of the stuff we made. There's another article about cooking with cannabis, Mrs. We Men. You didn't like this article that much. No, I don't really love it. No, but, you so don't. I'll and the just... reason why you don't like it because it was not written the greatest. Right. Right. But we do things different than this article when we cook. So, but I thought it was interesting when I when I read it and gave it to Mrs. We Men. But hey, giving it a shot. Giving them a shot. Yeah. Not everybody has tried cooking with cannabis, right. and I think now that. Cannabis is even more readily available. People are l- tending to lean towards edibles. And so then people who are, it seems like people who are reintroducing cannabis into their lives really lean heavy towards edibles. So in that way, I think it's important to talk about cooking with it and baking with it because a lot of people want to give it a try. And really anyone who is a home cook or baker, it's very easy to incorporate 
into your cooking. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a little article on the basics of uh, cooking with cannabis. Uh, cooking with cannabis utilizes the plant's various psychoactive and non-psychoactive chemical compounds in different but complementary ways. With tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, most recognized for its euphoric properties, and hemp cultivated worldwide for its fiber seed oil and durability value. While cannabis is not widely accepted in mainstream Western cuisine, cannabis food infusion is becoming more normalized as more states legalize recreational and medicinal cannabis. Let's go over a quick guide to cooking with cannabis. The best way to cook cannabis is by simmering it. Now this threw me off. I don't know that I would think that that was the best way, right? This method allows the cannabinoids to infuse into the food more easily. You can also add cannabis to food while cooking, but it's best to add a small amount of oil and water first and then add your cannabis. I've seen I've seen people I've seen people do it on TV and well, stuff, add the flour yeah. to the oils so and cook with it. They're them. literally just talking about take some bud and throw it into your sauteed vegetables. Um, which is really kind of like decarboxylating your your cannabis. So for anyone who hasn't started infusing and baking, most of the time that you're going to use cannabis, you're going to be infusing it into something. So this form of cooking is essentially like just just, you're, you're just infusing it right yeah, then and there. You're just throwing an herb on, right. on, on your on your. You're throwing an it's herb just on not it. as active, or you're going to overcook and burn out right. some of the active ingredients. I wouldn't put so much in there because sometimes. Cannabis could be bitter. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so they're talking about that being the best way. So right off the bat, I'm like, nah, I don't I think a lot of people would argue that, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Some of the most common cannabis forms to cook with are flowers and dried buds. So again, you can use cannabis flowers in various recipes, including baked goods and drinks. They have a strong aroma and a sweet taste. They can be crushed and mixed with other ingredients to make them more flavorful. Uh, not the best. Then you can buy and use THC powder or cannabis powder. Many cannabis chefs prefer THC powder because it's water soluble and therefore more versatile than flour or concentrates. This allows you to customize the experience and get a unique flavor. Many different varieties of dissolvable cannabinoid powder are available, including butane hash oil or BHO, keef and shatter. They all have their advantages and disadvantages depending on your particular cooking needs. Then you have oils. Uh, you can use infused oils when cooking. You can use olive oil, coconut as your base, then add other ingredients such as honey, butter, or even butter substitute as uh, a substitute such as coconut oil or palm shortening. You can use cannabis oils in both savory dishes and sweet dishes. And I will put in that category because they're not really saying that the butter would be infused. They're saying that you could add butter to an infused oil. You can infuse oil. You can infuse butter. You can infuse ghee. You can infuse a lot of things. Well, and then just use both together yeah, too. Coconut right. oil and ghee have done and together. Ghee, right. A combo. Um, so, or like they're saying, you maybe one of your products is infused and you're using, you know, you're sauteing your onions and butter and then you put an infused olive oil on your veggies at the end. Sounds right? delicious. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> tinctures. What are tinctures? They are another form of cannabis that you can use in cooking. You can make tinctures from your cannabis plant by putting the leaves into alcohol or glycerin. It, there, there's a lot of online uh, tutorials on how to make tinctures. Basically, it's a concentrate, an alcohol-based concentrate. So you're soaking your bud in grain alcohol, glycerin, whatever, and it's uh, extracting the THC and all the cannabinoids and terpenes into that oil, and then you run it through cheesecloth and purify it, and then you have what is a very, or alcohol, I said oil, glycerin or alcohol, so then you have this very, very concentrated liquid. Uh, not the alcohol. You don't get concentrated until you turn until you until you make to, it into an to, RSO until you make it to until you cook it down. All right, so Mr. Weedman's talking about the next step. You can take a tincture and turn it into a concentrate. But tinctures, I guess what I would say, okay, so it's not concentrated in THC, but it's very very heavy duty in Ooh, flavor. Yeah. It to me that's my least favorite the alcohol way to cook. Is, it's the just alcohol is tough too. Yeah, I like we did the sugar with it, which wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. We took that alcoholic uh, tincture we had and we we put sugar. I like the sugar. Put it in my right. coffee. It's great. Can of sugar. Yep. yep. And then you bake with it too. Recently? I haven't baked with it. No, yet. you haven't baked no. with it yet. 
All right. Another thing to do is to infuse your baking. So um, baking buds is one of the easiest ways to prepare cannabis edibles. Use infused oils, butters, or other fats to create your breads, cookies, and other treats. Um, Browning. You can also brown cannabis buds by heating them in a skillet over medium heat, occasionally stirring them until they turn brown. The method works well for small amounts of bud that aren't too moist. Um, and there's a lot of different recipes out there using cannabis. Here are a few of their favorite or most common uh, cannabis infused butter. We just talked about that. Um, it's a delicious way to add flavor and nutrients to your food. Spread can of butter over bread or toast or use it for veggies and meat when you're cooking. Um, you can make a jelly and infuse that with cannabis. Uh, combine your weed with sugar, lemon juice, and pectin in a saucepan. That pan. sounds amazing. That would be really good. Bring it to a boil, cook it down. Obviously, you can look up different uh, recipes for infusing or to make jelly. Then and you then can you take just it, that jelly and make a donut. Oh my gosh! Infuse with that with some butter in that donut, donut, and then shove that raspberry jelly in mm. that donut, and then you get the double banger. Wow! And you'll be banging donuts off the wall. <laughs> okay, Mr. Weedman, I think is cut off on the weed. <laughs> it's made you mellow but feisty. <laughs> How about this? I've never heard of this. Cannabis-infused rice, a great way to use weed that requires no cooking. All you need to do is combine one cup of rice with a half a ca cup of can of butter and a half cup of water. Stir it together and let it sit. How does the can of butter get in there? I guess the can of butter would have to be melted, right? Yeah, because don't you put a slab of butter in the water and rice when you cook it? I know, it? but this is not a cook recipe. This is just when you let your rice soak. Oh, Oh, I cook with I put yeah. butter and cook in it too. Yeah, no, they're they said let it sit on your counter for a few hours. Huh. Check into that. <laughs> Maybe not the best way. Um, how much weed should I use? The amount of weed you use when baking or cooking will depend on how strong the strain is, how much time you have, and what you plan to make. The amount of weed you use should not exceed an eighth of an ounce for your recipe because it will be too strong for most people. If you plan on making something like brownies or cake, use a little less than a quarter of an ounce so it's not too strong. If your recipe calls for more than a quarter of an ounce, make two batches instead of one. We cut it. Like if I'm yeah. if I want to make a low dose batch and I feel like our butter is too strong, I'll use it. You know, a half stick of regular butter, a half stick of infused butter, and then it's you know like a five milligram. I want to eat a whole cookie. I don't want to yeah. bite. Start low and go slow, like yeah. we've always talked about. But I like eating a whole cookie, mm -hmm. you know, or a whole whatever Mrs. Weedman makes. I mean, I want to eat like sometimes we like we want to eat two or three. Yeah. So make them five milligrams, so you can eat, you're still eating fifteen milligrams, but you're getting tree cookies. Yeah, and you're smiling. Yeah, maybe everybody doesn't want right. that, right? If if you right. are out. And you make edibles and you want, you know, it's not, it's for an enjoyment, but also like you want to get high so you can go and like party or whatever you're doing. That's a different story. But like if you're sitting at the house with people and you have dinner party coming over and, and you want to cook the whole dinner party. Yeah. Make the whole meal infused. You, you got to like, you want the whole meal amounts. to be 20 milligrams. <clears throat> then you're probably going to smoke after the meal too. So the enjoyment of is what you're cooking to add a little dabble, do you? in the cooking ingredients to get like two milligrams for this dish, five milligrams for this dish. You know, you make a dessert that has this and then you go bang a big fat bong, bong rip as a dessert, second dessert. There you go. <laughs> and then you're nice and good and ready and high. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. I like cooking with cannabis. I know you do too, Mrs. Weedman. I do. I always appreciate when you do. Uh, U.S. mayors approve resolution demanding Congress fix cannabis banking issues and end prohibition. I mean, the mayor's get the blunt of this in every city because that's legal. They have to help write the laws. They have to help do all this stuff. You said they get the blunt of it they instead do. of the brunt of the it. Brunt. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> but they do get the blunt of it because they are the ones that are helping regulate the rules and regulations of what the state implements. And without them being able to get the banking done, a lot of, a lot of places are getting robbed and a lot of people are getting held up and it's just, you know the mayors want to make sure they're protecting their their interest and in, in their and their constituents in their in their district, you know, or their town, city, or whatever. So I understand what they're trying to do. Uh, here's just still just makes me crazy. White House intern applicants will be asked about cannabis. Biden administration clarifies it. So if you use cannabis, you may or may not get the job. Is what they're saying. Great job, awesome. I want to <laughs> be. I want to go work for Biden. Mississippi starts medical cannabis licensing sales to begin by year end. Good for you. Can you spell Mississippi? M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 there you go. Can you? Uh, no. 
right now. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois craft grower operators frozen from operations as 12 craft growers obtain temporary restraining orders. This is like, man, this is ongoing. Uh, about a week after Illinois regulated awarded 48 new craft grower licenses, or, uh, uh, licenses, licenses are barred from continuing operations as a result of a temporary restraining order imposed by Winnebago County judge for one week after 12 craft grower allegedly alleged the process was rigged against them. So there's more. More of just holding up all these licenses. But wait, there's more about Illinois. The governor signed a bill to close cannabis expungent loophole. Uh, the governor, uh, Governor Pritzker, signed a legislation sponsored by uh, a couple of the senators in their respective chambers last month in advance to the legislature in April. The measure will revise the state's Criminal Identification Act to stipulate that occurs shall not deny the petition for expungement or sealing because the petitioner has submitted a drug test with, taken within the 30 days before filing that for the petition of the expungent or sealing that indicates a positive test for the presence of cannabis with the petitioner's body, Sonata says. They're looking to correct this with the records from meaningfully participating in society because a positive drug test for cannabis, Collins said, is in a press release. We have to stop treating it use uh, as grounds for dismissal with respect to the jobs and petition filing. So they're trying to fix their shit here in Illinois. I get it. They expunged about 500000 though, so far. So um, that's good. That's positive. But those other 185 licenses, too, are still who the hell knows of those dispensaries if they're ever going to open up. I mean, this is nuts. West Virginia. Activists are collecting signatures to put cannabis decriminalization measures on local ballots. You know there's people growing cannabis up in those hills, though, in West Virginia, just like up in the mountains of Kentucky. There's some fine weed up there. North Carolina medical cannabis legalization effort likely done for 2022. North Carolina, man, I wanted to go visit your state. You just keep on fucking it up. Oh, man, get your shit together. Uh, Bill Maher predicts Republicans will steal the cannabis legalization debate and make it about freedom because Democrats are obsessed with slipping racial equity law into legal uh, legislation. I, uh, I, it just who cares who gets the credit? Who cares? I just think both either side they're just using it now, just against us or for us or whatever. I don't care what Bill Maher believes. It's a ploy on both sides because if they wanted it done, it would have been done already. So let them keep on just running us around in circles. We like Airbnbs. Yeah. Right? We do. And we talked about tourism on the last episode. And I thought this was really good. And this is right up your alley. So all you out there in the world that want to travel and check out some Airbnbs that are 420 friendly. Mrs. Weeman's going to tell you what it's all about. Yeah. Tell them, Mrs. Weeman. Got an article here on 420 friendly Airbnbs, popular stays and how to find them. Now that many U.S. states and Washington, D.C. legalize cannabis, weed is attracting many tourists to states where it's legal. However, most state laws require to use cannabis on private property only, leaving visitors with two options, light up in a hotel and hope you don't get caught, or rent a cannabis-friendly Airbnb for your next vacation. Owners of Airbnbs that label themselves as cannabis-friendly are totally cool with you using cannabis on their property. But how do you find these Airbnbs and what ones are the most popular? We got the scoop on how to snag one of these 420 friendly stays and which ones you might want to look at first. First things first, how do you know if an Airbnb is 420 friendly? The secret secret is in the search terms. Airbnb has no policy against the use and possession of cannabis on properties as long as cannabis consumption is legal in the state in which the Airbnb exists and the owners aren't selling or gifting it on their property. With that being said, Airbnb doesn't make it very easy to find these properties. For example, there are no cannabis filters when choosing a property. Usually hosts will write cannabis friendly or something similar in either the title or the description of the listing. The best course of action to find an Airbnb that allows cannabis use is to conduct a Google search of various terms along with the word Airbnb and your desired location. Some sim some popular search terms include 420 friendly Airbnb, cannabis friendly Airbnb, green friendly, smoking allowed, marijuana friendly, smoking friendly, smoking Mary Jane. Keep in mind that every property has different requirements. You're likely free to take edibles and vapes into any home, but some Airbnb 
Airbnbs may require you to smoke outside. Always reach out to the property owner if you're unsure. To make the process easier, we have a list of some of the most popular Airbnbs that allow cannabis use. These are located cr- throughout the country in areas where recreational cannabis is legal for adult use. Um, and I will tell you, there's a, uh, I think it's on Netflix, there's a program and it's uh, three hosts, two girls and a guy, and they each pick a place. One picks a place for experience or atmosphere, I think. The other is for eco-friendly and the other is uh, luxury. And so they all have different budgets and they all p- pick a place. They go to it. It's an Airbnb and they're always super unique or super lavish. And then they vote at the end on whose stay was best just overall. And oftentimes it's the experience um, I, that wins. But of course, then it leads you to, to do Airbnb searches to try to find these places. And it's really difficult to find. I've never been able to populate in an Airbnb search any of the homes that I found or saw on that program. So it's interesting that they're suggesting you just do a Google search and then add the Airbnb term to whatever words you're searching. Um, so worth a try. Um, anyway, this is a quick list of their uh, top cannabis-friendly Airbnbs right now. So the first one is Rancho de Colores in Joshua Tree, California. It's a three-bedroom home located in the desert. It is completely pink with rainbow colors adorning every inch of the interior and exterior. I bet that's beautiful at sunset. And maybe sunrise, too. The house is also decked out with psychedelic art, creating a trippy experience for your Mojave Desert getaway. The home also includes an above-ground pool, a fire pit, and more. Perfect for throwing some lit 420 parties. There is another one. It is called the Cannabis Garden Apartment in Juneau, Alaska. This two-bedroom apartment is more than just a 420-friendly Airbnb. It's also a grow house. But the property's biggest seller might be the large back patio overlooking the Alaska wilderness. There's a good chance you'll see wildlife in the surrounding forests. It's centrally located in Juneau, surrounded by many restaurants and shops. The best attractions are either a walk or a short drive away. Keep in mind that the owners request you smoke joints and blunts outside. Uh, Then we have the Cannabis Friendly Cabin in Harrison, Maine. If childhood summer camps are a fond memory for you, you'll love staying at this cabin in Harrison, Maine. Located on the Crooked River, this Airbnb offers a variety of outdoor and river activities. The owner has 17 acres of the surrounding forest where you can hike, fish, go mountain biking, kayaking, and more. The home has a queen-size bed, but your guests are more than welcome to set up their tents and camp outside. The home also has air conditioning and a shower house. There are many 420-friendly Airbnbs that can give you cannabis vacations of your dreams. Try using our suggested search terms to find affordable, cannabis-friendly lodging in any state where cannabis is legal. Sweet. Good luck searching. Tell us all about it if you find any. I want to own a cannabis Airbnb. I know. Me too. And give the best. Let's quit our jobs. Let's give the best Mr. and Mrs. Weed Man and cannabis just, experience ever. Let's do it. I'm I'm in. Let's find it. Let's do, do it. it. Let us all know if you come and visit Mr. and Mrs. Weed Man on our <laughs> cannabis experience Airbnb property. Yeah. We'll take it to you. We'll have some fun. Can we do that in the middle of a hemp farm? I would do it in the middle of anywhere. Because we yeah, probably couldn't ever get fun. a license for a <laughs> weed farm. <laughs> well, you never know. Once it goes federally legal, we'll see what happens. But right. You know, you got to go to a state that's not legal and fight for legalization. Mm-hmm. And then you get what you want. So, international news. Traveling to Europe this summer. It's going to be busy. I, I've read and heard that Europe is going to be crazy busy this year. So, you're going to need some weed. So, here's how to score some. <laughs> uh, we know that a lot of the countries that it's not fully legalized, but there's ways to get around to just clubs and stuff like that. So, uh, as they as the borders are opening up, around the world it's going to be crazy out there this year so even better more destinations in uh continent have changed their approach to the cannabis making it even easier for you to get your fix of thc or cbd there's a lot of cbd in the world i I mean we did that we went on that trip around europe and there was cbd everywhere so don't worry about getting cbd but getting thc a little different story so let's talk about let's talk about some of the countries if you decide to go there freetown christiana denmark Freetown Christiana is a bohemian hotspot in Scandinavian Europe where cannabis is growing is completely legal. 
even if it's illegal in the rest of the country, head over to Persia Street, which is the name of the Green Light District, as it's called, and you will find lots of cannabis being openly sold on the streets. Uh, additionally, Christiana is, is well known for its laid back lifestyle, charming attractions, and strong environmental activism. Despite that, it still attracts many tourists from around the world who come to Denmark seeking cannabis in all of the forms. In Pusher Street, uh, it should be called in Polar Street instead of Pusher. I'm not a pusher, I'm a <laughs> puller. <laughs> you can purchase cannabis in resin blocks, joints, and so much more. The government has turned a blind eye to it for many years, and the locals tolerate it. Uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Cannabis has uh, also been used there and decriminalized uh, in Portugal, and the police officers have no interest in catching people for cannabis offenses. Just be sure to behave in public and don't go streaking. <laughs> Barcelona, Spain. Uh, paella, wine, and tapas aren't the only reasons many tourists come to Barcelona. Sure, the lovely city, the culture, and nearby beaches are incredibly, but... Uh, but what better to enjoy it than being high? Barcelona is quickly become, getting the reputation of becoming one of Europe's most cannabis-friendly cities. Cannabis social clubs and lounges are now sprouting like weed around the city. And you can surely get more quanti- uh, quality top-shelf bud there compared to neighboring Portugal. Hey, we don't don't talk about that. They have good weed. You have good weed. There is current loophole in the law that allows cannabis clubs uh, to exist legally. However, smoking and possession is still, uh, is still legal... Uh, Provided you do this at home or within the social cannabis club if you're able to obtain a membership. Uh, Czech Republic, Prague. Uh, while possession and smoking cannabis is still illegal in Czech Republic, there is still clear cannabis legalization movement going on in Prague. However, possession of under 4 grams is generally acceptable. <laughs> Though you still want to avoid being caught by the cops. Be sure to smoke in private. Generally, authorities are lax uh, about as long as you don't smoke in public. Berlin, Germany, which will soon, Germany will be legal upon arriving in Berlin. It's not uncommon to smell the distinct aroma of cannabis floating throughout the city. Hell yeah. Only medical cannabis has been legal in Germany since 2017, though they have quickly become biggest MMJ market in the entire continent with recreational cannabis is still illegal. Having said that, cannabis is tolerated in Berlin. You can always find locals smoking it in public, and cops tend to leave you alone. If you do, cannabis under 11 grams is considered a tiny amount, and there is rare that you do get caught or won't get caught or get in any kind of trouble. That's awesome. So the best way to score weed is Berlin is through personal contacts, though it's also become common to find dealers on the Telegram app. Some Telegram groups can be found as well. So if you're going to Europe, find it. Do it. I found it in Dubrovnik. I smelt it. So your nose always knows. So if you go to Europe this year, go find yourself some weed. Morocco set up an agency to regulate legal cannabis. Man, I want some Moroccan hashish. Let's go. Thailand is taking some more steps into legalizing cannabis. There's so much going on over there. The one million plants that the government's giving away, but they don't want you to smoke it. They just want you to grow it. Makes no sense to me. But all I know is it's relaxed in the cannabis laws and users are permitted to possess and grow the plant. Uh... And there's going to be some new guidelines and all that stuff. But good for you, Thailand. Just move them progressive forward. Just don't fuck it up. Uh, Ukraine, with all the shit that's going on there right now, they're still going to legalize medical cannabis, health minister says. They need it. <laughs> so we start, I would say a couple of years ago, we started using uh, hemp wick with beeswax, right? Yeah. We love it. We love it's it. It's great. Lighten up yeah. our joints, lighten up our bowls, lighten up our bongs. You know, whatever we got. We like it. We've been a little lazy about it lately. Yeah. We go we go back and forth. The birds love it. Yeah. So let's talk about what it is. Tell us what it is, Mrs. Weed Mine. Um, this article is about hemp wick. Have you ever tried lighting up with it? And what is it? Um, I'm actually holding a reel of it. It's kind of like a like a ball of yarn. But it's hemp that is coated in beeswax. So uh, did you know that you can use hemp to light your cannabis? Well, uh, when it's time to smoke cannabis, there's a need to light up, right? Whether it's a Bic or a Zippo, the typical butane lighter usually comes in handy for most users. Truly, one could conclude that a lighter is the second most vital piece behind weed itself. Nonetheless, cannabis lovers who are also health conscious are looking for an alternative to matches or conventional lighters. So far, the hemp wick tops the list as the best alternative to matches and lighters. So what is it? A hemp wick is a long ball of twine made from natural hemp fibers and coated with beeswax. Thanks to beeswax, the hemp wick acts like a candlestick, taking a very long time to burn. 
hemp wick can be used to light pipes and bongs and advocates of and advocates affirmed it's a healthier option compared to matches and lighters. For many decades, humans have used hemp wicks for various purposes. Today, manufacturers make use of the durable, long fibers of industrial hemp to produce the wick. The fibers are also utilized to manufacture cord, buildings, and various useful commodities. To light up the hemp wick, you can either use a lighter or a match. Once you've done it, it slowly burns and it's best used for a bong, bowl, or any smoking device. Since it takes a long time to burn, you can keep it lit while you add more cannabis to your bowl. Once you're done, blow it out and keep it neat for the next session. Um, There's even like uh, big lighter covers that you can like wrap the hemp wick around. Um, You can just cut... We usually just cut a section of it off and then just light that. I will say it's a little stinky when you exhaust it. It's kind of smoky, um, like burning out, you know, like putting out a candle, um, but super easy to work with. Um, so why should you use a hemp wick? With butane gas, cannabis burns at a very high temperature, and once inhaled, it's considerably hotter, causing increased risk of damage to your lungs and throat. The butane gas also mixes with your smoke, which moves to your lungs, causing it to be exposed to sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide, which are both harmful substances. On the other hand, when matches are used to light cannabis, the user inhales a combination of glue, wood, and various combustible chemicals. So, lighting your weed with a lighter or a match can also damage the fundamental cannabinoids in the strain. The increased temperatures affect the cannabis quality, and um, it's just overall not great. The fact is, terpenes and cannabinoids have distinct burn-off temperatures. When the temperature exceeds that, the benefits of these cannabinoids are lost. For example, terpenes are responsible for the characteristic taste and smell of weed. Burning these terpenes off ultimately reduces the flavor. There are advantages to using hemp wick. Um, when it's used to light a joint, it offers a cleaner smoking experience. No doubt you'll still still need a match or a light to kick off the process, but you set them aside immediately after the wick starts burning. Since the wick is produced from hemp, it's considerably healthier compared to butane. It does not give off poisonous fumes uh, linked to butane lighters and matches. Another vital point is that it burns at a considerably lower temperature compared to butane since it isn't a gas. This implies that you're getting more cannabinoids from using a hemp wick to light or burn your weed. Hempwick's lower combustion temperature helps to conserve more cannabinoids and terpenes, so users will be getting more flavorful hits too. While the hempwick isn't a perfect solution, its pros far outweigh its cons. Here are some of the downsides. Uh, You have to learn how to properly light the wick, uh, and that might take some practice, really not, maybe once try it. It's very simple. If you're already high or you suffer from poor hand coordination, uh, you might burn something else aside from the hemp wick. Um, Even though hemp wick offers a lot of benefits, it's not as common as you might think, so therefore getting it at your local store might be a challenge. Uh, It's easier to find online. Um, It can also be inconvenient for on-the-road smoke sessions. Uh, A more convenient option would be cutting a small section and bringing it along, but then you could easily lose that. So, um, and they also have a pungent smell, like I was talking about when you exhaust it. It's a little bit strong. Um, But hemp wicks vary in size. They're usually a few feet to several hundred feet. You can also get them in various diameters. Uh, You should note that the thicker the wick, the longer it burns. Um, ours is like the thickness of like butcher's twine. It's just a thin, thin twine. The birds yeah. love it. Oh, the birds do love to pick at it. Um, so you just un- unroll it. This is a step-by-step approach to using it. You unroll a section, um, you can cut it off or like I said, they sell like lighter covers that you can wrap a section of it on, or you just hold the small piece, right? Use a lighter to mat to uh, ignite it, wait for a second for the exposed end to burn away because that's where the butane would be from lighting it with a lighter or the chemicals from the match. So let it burn for a few seconds, um, make sure the flame is steady, and then use it to light just like you would using a match or a lighter. 
once you're done using it, blow it out and make sure it's that I would say you got to make sure you put it out. You might forget, you know, put it down on the table or something. Um, a lot of cannabis users are now beginning to use hemp wicks as a healthier alternative to igniting their joints. If you're interested in trying it, the easiest way is to find it online because a lot of stores don't carry it. So pretty cool. Yeah, you can find it online yeah. pretty cheap. Yeah, so, Amazon. Yeah. Little so, head shops online. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Support the local business first. If you find mm-hmm. it there, it's great. So. Yep. Remember this song? Heck yeah. I'm in the back of my station wagon growing up right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> back in my pants. Great song, great band, the Almond Brothers. Getting their own flower line. Yeah. Pre-roll line. It's going to be exclusively in Illinois to start. Oh. Yeah. What's their connection to Illinois? Chocolate Chunk. I have no idea. That's so, weird. Chocolate Chunk. Mm. I'm gonna try to find it. Smoke it. We'll rate it on the show. Anybody knows about it, where I can find it, let Mr. and Mrs. Wee Man know. Because yeah. I love the Almond Brothers. So they were a great band. If you don't if you don't know who they are, I suggest you listen to them. They're With great. Southern Rock, you know. I like Southern Rock. It's great. It's good. It's when you're high. I mean, who doesn't like Leonard Skinner, the Almond Brothers, and a lot of other bands? So I'm going to look for Chocolate Chunk and try it out. So good for you, Almond Brothers. They're also going to do some edibles, too, and vapes and pre-rolls. Good for them. Awesome. Just people getting into cannabis. They were smokers in the 70s. They promoted weed. They gave no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Weed Man. Yeah. You feeling better? I had a major attitude adjustment. Gotta love some great. weed. You should, weed. Smoked, you should have smoked weed the moment you got home. I should have. <laughs> I had an annoying appointment today. <laughs> I'm all better now. All thank better you, cannabis. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, weed. We love you. <laughs> hey, everybody out there in the world. We appreciate you listening. Thank you for all everybody reaching out to us. 8decades.com. Check us out. All of our social media handles are on there now. Look it up. YouTube. Twitter, Insta, uh, what else? That TikTok. Mrs. Weed Man's got her stuff with eight decades too on there. Check us out. Look at some of the cool ass products we got on there. Dope as hell. So we got some cool things coming down the pipe for you all too. I'm so excited, so happy. Looking forward to smoking with you all again. Don't forget to smoke big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. As Paulie always says, smoke smart. Puff puff in the way. Puff puff pass. <laughs>